there's no better time than now to start a video production business. For the past couple of years, I've been making a majority of my income from freelance video work with a fairly beginner camera setup and really intermediate editing skills. And in this video, I wanna show you how anyone watching this can start one of these video production businesses and before you know it, turn it into a business that's making six plus figures a year. This is the video that I wish I watched in high school because I knew I liked making videos and editing, but the barrier to entry for this industry always seemed so high. School will tell you to go to film school where you spend four years Years, learning about the history of film and what a medium shot is and then you graduate with zero experience in the field just to become like a boom mic operator on some indie movie set now personally I don't care about any of that I just like being creative and turning a vision in my head into something real and thanks to social media thanks to the internet there's millions of job opportunities out there for young creatives to work in an industry like this without having to rely on some big production company for your next paycheck here's the blueprint for starting a video production business that I would follow if I had to start over again number one choose a niche now you can find success in just about any niche when it comes to video production you can do car videos you can do music weddings but it's pretty crucial that you choose one topic that you focus on and master before you move on to other types of content if you don't do this you're gonna be spreading yourself out way too thin and you're gonna be missing out on opportunities from being the guy that people go to for a certain type of video. The success of a business like this is really dependent on referrals. So if you're doing a music video one week and then some corporate marketing video the next week and you're just jumping around all the time, you never really establish yourself in one thing and you're making it way harder for you to find something that is sustainable and reliable. When you focus on one thing and do a really good job with it, you start seeing a snowball effect one happy client will refer you to all of his friends who are in the same niche, will refer you to their friends, and that way you just never really have to do any marketing. So the niche that I've kind of just found myself in is real estate and construction. This is a really good niche to get in because having high quality content in real estate and construction is king. You know, these developers and the real estate agents, they wanna make their houses look as good as possible. So if you can do that, they're willing to invest a lot of money. And with something like this, you always have work popping up because there's always houses being built, there's always houses being sold. Now I definitely do take on random jobs when they come about because I like working on different types of things and just challenging myself but I definitely did not especially when I was starting out I did not focus on trying to find 10 different niches that I can try to tap into by just focusing on one you're putting yourself in the best position for success it's like that one saying the deer that chases two rabbits gets none or something like that Number two, study what the best are doing. There's different nuances to every different niche of video production. In real estate videos, they're usually slow and smooth to show the interior of a house. Car videos usually have a very quick editing to show the chaos of a fast car. So by studying these other types of videos, you understand what people are looking for. And then when you go out to shoot, you already have the video concept planned out in your head. By doing this, you figure out the best process for you. Instead of doing a bunch of guesswork, and then when you sit down to edit the video, you go, damn, this is not as good as I thought. So go on Google or Instagram and find the best people that are making videos in your niche and see what they're doing that you don't have the skills to yet and try to figure out how you can get there. Number three, Work for free with what you have. A lot of people who get into video production and photography and stuff, their first question is always, what's the best camera to buy? Or how do I get the big client? If you're just starting out, you are going to suck. It doesn't matter how good your equipment is. You're going to have to spend time learning how to shoot and edit the types of videos that you're trying to make. And that's gonna take some time. And if you just go out swinging, looking for clients, they're gonna pay you right away. Even if you find someone, you're gonna be so overwhelmed. There's gonna be so much pressure on making that video good. And by buying a bunch of equipment in the beginning, it's probably gonna be pretty overwhelming for you by figuring out how to work with the equipment that you have and by doing it for free you're taking away all the pressure of trying to make a client happy or trying to get that perfect shot and by working for free you're growing your portfolio and your skill set ten times faster than some other beginner who is waiting for the right job because they feel entitled to being paid for their time okay so here's what I would do if I wanted to start shooting cars for example I'll take my iPhone or whatever camera I have laying around and I would go to a car show or somewhere else where a bunch of car guys meet up that are involved in car culture and the industry. And I'd go there and I would try to figure out the people who have the biggest Instagram followings and I would shoot a quick little car edit for them for completely free. I'd make like a little 30 second Instagram edit or whatever, send it to them, put it on my Instagram, start going a car page, and then you can hit these guys up on Instagram. You can say, hey, if you like my video, I'll do another one for your friends for free. So do that for a couple weeks and you're gonna be building up a pretty good Instagram portfolio of car edits. And eventually you're gonna get better and better for every video that you make. And you're gonna have people start reaching out to you to make videos for them for 
cheddar. Now, every industry might not be as easy as that, but the same principles apply to pretty much everything. If you just start out working for free and you build up your skills, eventually people are going to want to pay you for that. Number four, once you make money, invest back into the business. So this is when you can start buying the fancy camera gear. To be honest, I find that to get the quality of 95% of the videographers out there, you can achieve it with a full frame Sony, a couple different lenses, like a gimbal, maybe a drone and like a lighting setup. Like all in all, with a couple thousand dollars, which you can make from just a couple of shoots, you can be making quality content that competes with a majority of the competitors out there. And investing back in the business doesn't always mean having to buy equipment. It can be investing in marketing. So now you can advertise your business and start growing it way bigger. You can invest stuff that makes the editing process easier, like get a good chair, get a good desk. Once you start making money, all of these things are write-offs. But by having this invest back into the business mindset, you are basically just setting yourself up for the future. You are removing a lot of headaches that could come about. Instead of like the first year that you make 50 grand, you go out and spend half of it on a brand new car. Number five, once you're good, know what you're worth. This is definitely something that I've struggled with. A lot of times when people ask me for a quote, I have undercharged because I didn't want to come off as rude or I just didn't feel like I was good enough to be charging a certain price. But once you understand the value that you're bringing to the table and how much other people are charging, you realize there's no downside to asking for more money. Something that I've learned over the years is usually the first price that you give a client, you're going to say yes to it. They very rarely fight back. And even if they do, even if they're not happy with the first price you give them, you can always come down from a higher price. But coming up from a lower price that you've already set a standard for what your services are worth, that's way more difficult. So know what you're worth. Number six, expand. So this is kind of the point that I'm at right now is I've spent about the last year and a half working on a bunch of different video projects to the point that it really, I've got it dialed in my process for making these videos and it doesn't take that much mental energy for me. And when you get to this point, it's probably a good time to start expanding your skill sets that will complement the ones that you've already developed. So with video production, this usually means getting into marketing. You learn Facebook ads, you can learn Google ads understand how YouTube and TikTok algorithms work. And by doing this, it brings you into big leverage territory where your income is not dependent on the amount of time you spend working. When you can exponentially increase the value that your skills are providing as you can with Google ads and Facebook ads and stuff, then you exponentially can increase your income at the same time. With expansion, it can also mean building out a team. When you have these types of skills and you see that they work and you have money coming in, it could be the right time to start hiring people on and teaching them the things that you have learned. By doing this, you can slowly start creating your own little video empire. And before you know it, you'll be making six, seven plus figures a year. Now, all of this is achievable and it's honestly a lot easier than you would think if you just take it step by step. I'm not saying go out and build lyrical lemonade tomorrow. But what I am saying is that these skills are not going anywhere anytime soon. So if you can get into this business, into this type of industry, uh, you're putting yourself in a pretty good position. If you want to learn more about this and how to start in this type of industry, I have a three part series that I did last year when I was first starting to make real estate videos that you can check out so you can learn from my experiences. And thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.